Good morning, sunshine. I am very excited about today's video because it's a subject that is kind of dear to my heart. Um, I have an autoimmune disease that I handle through food. Therefore, I have to pay very close attention to the things that I eat, the, my protein intake, my vitamins, my nutrients, and all the good stuff. And I am also plant-based. Having said that though, I am not a doctor and I am not a nutritionist. So I am just sharing what I do for my personal health and how I deal with this in Merida, Mexico. So in this video, I wanna go over four things. One, vegan restaurants. Two, how to eat vegan in regular restaurants. Three, how do I find the foods that I'm used to eating in the United States here in Merida, Mexico? And last one, how to adapt to the local foods, to the local culture, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, which is my favorite part. So ready, let's go. If you're new to my channel, Hi, my name is Karen, and my daughters and I have been living on the road for the past few years, exploring, working, and learning through discovery. In this episode, we will explore some local restaurants, plus find some local foods to meet our plant-based needs. So the first thing we did when we got to Medina, Mexico was look for restaurants. <laughs> and Google and Yelp are not reliable here. They just do not have everything that you need. The biggest thing is word of mouth. And Facebook. A lot of businesses will do listings there and they'll put up their menu and then you can order through WhatsApp. This is the case for food trucks and businesses that will just deliver to your home. Now, if you're a local and you know how else to get some good vegan food, please let me know. Cause I would love to find more restaurants. So after being here for two months, I have found one, one restaurant, just one. Apparently during the pandemic, a lot of them went out of business and closed their doors. So we have one and I love it. It's Chango Mango and it's truly delicious and such a cute little vibe. Um, you walk in, it's very hippie. It has bright colors. It's tropical, it has outdoor seating and food is delicious. And they have a lot of things that are local, local flavors, local entrees and things like that. But they also have things that are dear to your heart, like a grilled cheese sandwich, right? Everybody has to have one of those every once in a while. Then through a friend, we found out that there was a vegan food truck that had offerings on Saturdays. And Ann Holman from Priority Focused Life, I'll put the link right there, created a whole video on this experience. The food was delicious. They make their meats with seitan, so it's good for people that like to eat vegan and people that don't. And they used a lot of the local flavors, which is kind of what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a melding of my dietary needs and local foods. The experience was great. We got to meet the family that ran the food truck and they got to tell us a little bit about why they do what they do. So I totally recommend checking out that specific video. Now, aside from that, there are a few other people that will deliver to your house. I was recommended La Viganita, from which we ordered a parrillada that had so much delicious seitan meat. And witches and cats. I have not tried them yet, but I'm totally looking forward to it. There's also meal plans that get delivered to your home. That's just not my kind of thing, but I hear they're delicious. Now, we have a large group of friends here in Merida, Mexico. So we go out often and we happen to go to restaurants. And a lot of the restaurants that I've wanted to try have not been vegan, so we have had to improvise. Now, it's very important for me to still experience the culture and I do not want my dietary needs to stop that. So I have been going to all kinds of restaurants just to see what they serve, what the vibe is, to experience Merida as a whole. What do I do in those situations? Uh, one, you cannot trust the menu. The menu is not very specific. I think a lot of people just assume that you know what chilaquiles are and a lot of the dishes here in the Yucatan have very specific names. Some of them are Mayan names. If you're a tourist, you might not know what's in the dish and the menu will not necessarily explain to you what it has in it it might be general for example the other day i went to order chilaquiles i did not know what was in them back then and it just said it had tomato sauce and vegetables i assumed it just had tomato sauce and vegetables so i order it and it had cheese and cream so my recommendation to you assume that everything has cream and cheese and just ask because chances are it will even if the main dish does not have cheese and cream the side might or sometimes rice has butter so yes i would definitely ask before before I order anything is the easiest way. Now, veganism is not very popular here, so I wouldn't necessarily ask if you have any vegan offerings. I would recommend just being specific with what you want, especially when you go to small pueblitos. If you tell them you're vegan, they might not know what to do with that. Also, come prepared. If you go on an outing, if you go to a cenote and you wanna eat something specific, take it with you. Um, otherwise, be ready to order a tomato sandwich or something of the sort just to improvise for the moment. The other thing that seems important to mention here is the fact that the side dishes are not very prominent. So in the US, if I went to a steakhouse, I would just order a couple of side dishes and they would work for me now here a lot of the side dishes will have dairy products in them one and two they're very very tiny so um, sometimes I would order a dish for my daughter that does eat meat and she would eat the meat and I would eat the sides but the side dishes here are really tiny look at my finger and look at the rice portion the portion of rice would probably be like a quarter of a cup and um, the salads are usually iceberg and maybe 
one little piece of tomato or one little piece of carrot they're not really significant enough for you to have as a meal so do not think of that as an option uh, when ordering meals here okay before we go to the next part which is preparing my own foods there's two things i want to point out one i am not completely vegan that's why i say i'm plant-based because i eat eggs and when i'm in dire need and there's nothing else to eat i will eat fish the other thing is it's very important for me to eat what's locally sourced so going to the mercado was the number one thing i wanted to do when i got here now a lot of these things and decisions that i made thereafter are based on that right i'm trying not to go to walmart for all my needs i'm trying to buy things that grow locally and help support the local economy so my go-to foods for protein back at home would be kale spinach broccoli quinoa lentils and tofu so the first thing that i did when i went to the mercado here was look for those things i did find spinach and i did find broccoli I I did not find any of the other things so I had to improvise and do some research to actually figure out what it was that I could get locally that would suit my dietary restrictions so the first week I bought all the fruits and veggies that I found at the market that called my name and I had to go to Walmart so I went to Walmart and searched for these things um, at least for the time being until I figured out what I could eat locally and I did find some things I found tofu but not in the refrigerated area and it's like a silken type of tofu it was really good it was really yummy and it kind of took care of what it needs to take care of they also have the greens that I usually get in their produce section they also have a large array of non-dairy milk I tried a lot of the dairy substitutes here and I have to say that they do not taste like back at home even the brand silk which is common in the United States tastes very different here some of the products are too sweet some are too salty and some have almost like a green flavor as if you were to use green beans you know like a grassy flavor I'm also used to for myself buying gluten-free products and those are very rare I found one brand of bread one brand of pasta so um, I just been omitting gluten in general um, because it's not something I'm used to eating all the time. Luckily, as a culture, in restaurants, you'll find more corn than wheat products. So if you're gluten intolerant, that would be a good thing for you. Hopefully, you can eat corn. <laughs> for me, both corn and gluten are an issue, so um, it's a matter of eating it in small quantities. If you are gluten intolerant, there's also a slow food market on Saturdays in which you can buy anything from gluten-free pasta to uh, vegan meals. Another place I wanted to mention is Soriana Hyper. This supermarket specifically has a lot of fresh fruits and even some specific herbs that I could not find at the Mercado. I also found textured soy, lots of different kinds of grains, and some Daya products, including maca cheese. In the cake aisle, I found some locally sourced nutritional yeast. In the dairy aisle, I found some silk yogurt. Again, doesn't taste the same. Some local soy chorizo, vegetable bouillon, and soy protein powder. The last place I wanted to mention was Mr. Tofu, where you can obviously find tofu, but also an array of vegan items. All right, now for the local things I have found. All right, so let's start with this lady that I ran into that was peeling her own beans. To be honest, I only bought it because I thought it was so fantastic that she was just peeling them right there. But when I tried them, they were fantastic. The flavor is so unique. So I find beans to be very um, grainy almost when you eat them, kind of pasty, kind of dry. These beans are completely different. They have a slightly tight shell. So when you bite with it, it has a little bit of a give, so it's not mushy. And then the flavor itself is very refreshing. It does not feel old and woodsy. It feels very refreshing, kind of like a salad. Delicious, I totally recommend trying these beans. The next thing, which I did not find in the Mercado, but is still locally sourced, is nutritional yeast. I am very big on nutritional yeast back home because I used it for my vitamin 12. And here at first, it was a little challenging to find. I found some places that were a little bit overpriced for something that I can eat regularly. But then finally, in a local supermarket, I did find a big bag of it and it was really good quality. A staple in my diet that I was glad to have found. To avoid buying spinach and kales at Walmart, I substituted that with chaya. Chaya is very popular here. A lot of people use it for drinks. Um, there's a popular drink called piña and chaya in which they blend the pineapple and the chaya together. Chaya is a green leaf, very bitter, but when paired together with the acidity and sweetness of the pineapple, it makes a really nice combination. They sell this at the market full leaf and you can cook it and eat it 
sauteed or in soups. I have made it in both and have highly enjoyed it. Another item that is popular in local foods is pepitas, which is the pumpkin seeds ground down to a little dust. They use it here for sauces. It is great for eating crust around things, like you know, if you want to do a crusted cauliflower or something like that. And it's also good, just like they do, to put in sauces. I've also used it as a topping for pasta and it gives it a nice little texture and a nice flavor. And it's really rich in protein. And last, but definitely not least, is wheat locoche. I hope I said that right, but here's the name, just in case I didn't. Um, it is a mushroom that grows on corn, and when paired with corn tortilla, makes a complete protein. I made a full video on that, right? I'll link it right here. It has been the easiest thing for me. This is really fast little snack that I could have on a regular basis. So I just saute the mushrooms and throw them in some corn tortillas, and I'm set to go. Now, even though you can find some of the cheeses from the United States here in Merida, Mexico. There's also some local vendors that create these goods. So if you saw my Vitolo Coche video, you'll see that I used a walnut cheese. This walnut cheese was from a local provider. Tacone is also the supplier of these cheeses and meat substitutes. If you have any questions about any of the things I mentioned, don't hesitate to ask in the comments. And don't forget to like and follow if you want to see more of our adventures and all the things we learn along the way. Thanks for joining, bye.